Okay, so what number is larger? Well, we're comparing two numbers here. We have one number written as a decimal and the other as a fraction. So we're trying to figure out is 0 0.021 larger than 1 over 50 or is 1 over 50 greater than 0 0.021? And I'm going to encourage you uh, to figure this out without the aid of a calculator. Really try to do this without a calculator. But if you're like, ah, I just have to use my calculator. Well, then go ahead and use your calculator. Either way, put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one moment. And then we're going to talk about how we can go through and, uh, you know, look at these two values without the aid of a calculator to figure out which one is larger. It's really important that you know how to order numbers in mathematics, i.e. Uh, when you're comparing two numbers, know which one is the uh, least and which one is the greatest value. But um, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion to help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with math. Please do not give up. The number one uh, thing you need to be successful in math is great math instruction. In other words, whoever you're learning math from or whatever you're learning uh, math from, if you're you know, spending time, you're just totally confused, then you are not learning. Okay, see, math is a technical subject, and sometimes it can be taught in a very, very, maybe sometimes an overly technical way. The way I like to teach math is to explain things in easy-to-understand language so everybody gets what's going on without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that has math on it that you're getting ready for, things like the GED, SAT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes. Okay, some of you might be take above average notes, but most students take average notes, i.e. that being the average. A lot of students don't take any notes, but if you truly want to improve and be great at math, you have to take excellent notes. So work on your note taking. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we have 0.021 and 1 50th. What number is larger? Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Here we go. So 0 0.021 is larger than 1 over 50. And of course, we can use this nice little inequality symbol right there to express that. But this is the larger number. Okay, so even if you used a calculator, either way, that's excellent. But if you got this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100%. And a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know how to uh, determine what number is larger given a decimal and a fraction. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so if you're a little bit confused about this, let's go ahead and get you unconfused right now. All right, so the big issue here is that we have a decimal, we have a fraction. There's two things we could do. We can either take this 1 over 50, this 1 50th, fraction and write it as a decimal okay now that would be a lot of work especially if you're talking about uh, using uh, not having your calculator available to you now some of you hopefully are really good at place value and uh, if you are good at place value then this will be much much easier but there's a couple different approaches you can uh, take to figure this problem out so the way I figured it out might be different than the way you did it as long as you understood your approach and you weren't guessing that's perfectly fine so anyways let's go ahead and get into how I like to think of this problem so here we have the decimal 0 0.021 now notice I'm saying 0 0.021 but really there's another way to say this decimal so let's go ahead and just quickly review place value. So what place is this? Well, this is the tenths place. The two is in the hundredths place. And the one is in the thousandths place. So the way the way we want to uh, say this decimal is uh, 21 thousandths. Okay, you always use whatever uh, digit is in that last uh, place value. So here we have the tenths, hundreds, thousands. So this would be 21 thousandths. So we literally can just write a fraction 
the way it sounds. Okay, now again, I'm saying 0 0.021, but if we think about place value, this is the same thing again as 21 thousandths. Now, if you knew that, that's excellent. Okay, so now I could just write this decimal as a fraction, super easy. Now, I could have taken one over 50, and you can just go into your calculator and take one divided by 50, and you'll come up with a, an equivalent decimal. But, you know, it's easier just to kind of uh, take this and uh, put it into fraction form, in my opinion. All right, so now we're going to uh, figure out which uh, number is uh, bigger. Okay, we have 21 over 1,000, 1 over 50. Now, here, it's not so obvious because the denominators are not the same. But hopefully you can see, oh, this is 50, this is 1,000. I know 50 goes into 1,000. Let's kind of uh, write both of these fractions so that they have the same denominators. And the easiest thing to do is to fix up this fraction so it has a denominator of 1,000. Okay, so how can we do that? Easy. Just take 1,000 divided by 50, and that will be 20. In other words, if I take that 50 and multiply by uh, 20, I will get back to 1,000. All right, so if I multiply the denominator by 20, I also have to multiply the numerator by 20. So when we do that, we're going to end up with an equivalent fraction of 20, right? 20 times 1 is 20. 50 times 20 is 1,000. So 20 over 1,000 is the same thing if you had this fraction and you reduced it down uh, and you were told to simplify or reduce that fraction, you get back to 1 over 50. But the reason why we have it written this way is so we can compare these fractions with the same denominator. So now the question is, which number is larger? Now, hopefully, it's pretty, pretty easy to see that, oh, this one has 21, this is 20, so this is the larger fraction. But let's say you were a little bit confused. Let's say you did this, you you're still were just a little bit unsure. Here's the thing. Always use a simpler example in math if you're, you know, confused. And try to distill things down into an easier example. So, for, exa uh, for example, right, I'm using that word example a lot, but uh, we could take these two numbers. You're like, all right, you know what, let me write two fractions where the denominators are the same. So let's use four, for example. And then this one, uh, this numerator is larger than this numerator. So let's make that three over four. And this uh, make this one, one over four. Okay, so this would be like an equivalent type of problem. So look at these two fractions and say, hey, which one is larger? Is three fourths uh, greater than one fourth? Ho hopefully it's pretty obvious to you that three-fourths is larger than one-fourths. So just in case you were unsure, you know, use a simple example, convince yourself, oh, okay, yes, this one, the one with the larger numerator is the larger number, so 21 uh, over 1,000. Now, again, this as a fraction, uh, this decimal is 0 0.021. Okay, so 21 thousandths, and this is what, 20 thousandths, this is the decimal point zero, uh, this fraction is point zero two zero, 20 thousandths, right? So if you were asked which number is uh, larger, point zero two one or point zero two zero, hopefully it's pretty obvious to see when we have a decimal compared to a decimal that this is the larger value. So, you know, again, there's not one way to approach this problem. As long as you're not guessing, that's what counts. And the better part of this is if you, um, you know, now know that you're like, you know what, I don't always need my calculator. Put that calculator away. Calculators are awesome and they're critical. You need to have them in mathematics. But you know, you don't want to become overly dependent uh, upon uh, using calculators because you use you lose, excuse me, a lot of your basic math skills. Okay, and you need those basic arithmetic skills, not only like in arithmetic, like elementary school, you know, level mathematics or middle school math. You need those skills in algebra. Okay, so put your calculator away from time to time and just practice good old fashioned, you know, pencil and paper mathematics. I think I'll get a lot more satisfaction out of getting uh, problems right when you're not using your calculator. Okay, so if you need help in basic math, if you're still a little bit like mm, unsure about your basic math skills, let me suggest uh, my Math Foundations mini course. It's a three chapter mini course. You can find that at my website under my middle and high school math program. It's an excellent refresher on decimals, place values, fractions, percent, all that kind of good stuff that most of us probably forgot because we took that way back in the fourth grade, fifth grade, all those good years, way back when we had recess. 
Anyways, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.